new beacon of hope rises for rural communities, underserved and unserved areas across Nigeria. This is because the Rural Electrification Agency is proud to lead the charge in illuminating the lives of millions through sustainable and renewable energy. I'm Ayodiji. Makindi, welcome to Reshaping Democracy. Now, talking about the transformative power of energy access, we're getting there as for too long. Rural communities have been left in the dark, deprived of the opportunities and possibilities that electricity brings. The Managing Director, Rural Electrification Agency, Abba Abubakar Aliyu, is on reshaping democracy to give answers to citizens and their questions on renewed hope activities in the sector. My Honorable MD, Rural Electrification Agency, I have uh, two questions for you. One the question is that, uh, uh, concerning the fact that uh, this agency is a very important agency that, touch, that touches the lives of uh, rural dwellers. But here in Zampore State, I can tell you that uh, there's no anyone that maybe will tell you that uh, he's even aware of the existence of this agency. But now, to God be the glory that uh, now you are alive, Hearing us, what effort are you going to make to make sure that uh, this issue of provision of uh, electricity at maybe at uh, in, uh, to the rural areas will now be come to life? Uh, thank you very much. I, uh, first of all, I would like to um, uh, acknowledge the fact that this is a very good opportunity for not only uh, the citizen but for REA to one provide feedback in terms of what are the things and the project that we are implementing and at the same time also let Nigeria know of the work, uh, plan work that the president government of President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is working towards. Um, to answer the question from the Paris state, um, I, it's on record there's no single uh, state in the country where IEA does not have a project. Um, most of our projects revolve Around either we are doing grid extension, extending the current grid, most recently at the distribution level, to communities and providing them with transformer to serve that community. Or in a situation whereby such community is totally not within the reach of the grid, we provide generation capacity within that community through distributed renewable energy, provide the generation, build the distribution network, meet at the community and provide them with sustainable solar electricity, electricity supply in the communities. Uh, in a situation whereby the areas, for example, the communities are sparsely populated, we go to this area and provide them with solar home system whereby we provide a standalone system that powers house by house basis. Uh, this is in the situation whereby the Grid is not what is required to provide them with uh, the electricity. And uh, we also intervene in areas whereby uh, we provide standalone solar equipment. In this time, this time around, it's not a solar home system that provides the, the household, but solar equipment to power protective use. So, for example, solar irrigation pumps or deep uh, solar uh, freezers for economic activities. So to answer the, the, the person from Zamparara, there is no any area that REA does not have a project, be it grid extensions, mini grid, solar home system, or standalone uh, equipment. The present government, under the leadership of the President Ahmed Chibu and uh, uh, the guidance of the uh, Minister of Power, have designed and approved one of the biggest intervention of addressing the electricity gap. And that project is called the Distributed Access Through Renewable Energy Scale-Up, which is the biggest public sector funded project in the entire world. A $750 million project. And it's one of the first things that the present government approved, which is to, with the implementation will start uh, next month. And this project, it's uh, designed to revolve around a private sector where the private sector will come and take, get grant and subsidy for the federal government 
and also bring in their own funding. It is expected that the 750 will crystallize a private sector funding of 1.1 billion. So imagine 1.850 billion targeted to address this electricity gap. We have a plan to address, uh, to provide 17.5 million Nigerians with access to electricity. How do you intend to collaborate with both the state and local government council to ensure a successful implementation of rural electrification project. The, the new electricity act, right, that has been created, uh, that has been signed also, kudos to the present uh, government, has create, made it even compulsory for the federal agencies to collaborate with state in this uh, implementation of uh, whatever intervention we are doing. So what we are now working on, and this is also a tall order given to us by the Honorable Minister of Power to develop the National Electrification Plan. And that is what we, we are working on. Uh, we just uh, sought the approval of the Vice President to, to collaborate with National Economic Council, where all the state governments are there to make a presentation of this plan. The plan is going to be a game changer in providing electricity access in the country. What the plan will do is to map each and every state who are going to go to each state, take stock of the existing electrification level of that state. What are the, the grid extension? Where are the communities that are not electrified? Where are the communities that are on the south? How should this community best be served? Should they should the communities be served with the mini grids or solar home system, or should we extend the grid to provide these communities? And we are also going to map the entire communities within this state. So you will have a digital mapping whereby you can scroll and see where the served areas on sub are on the sub. Then we are going to aggregate this entire um, uh, plans of each state to have the national electrification plan. Why are you giving on this billing and this this supply is not given? So I asked the government to supply us this answer. What is happening to people that hold the licenses and yet they are not performing? So for the communities that we provide the mini grids, um, the rates are uh, cheaper than the um, uh, what you have in the on grid, and also the determination of the electricity tariff for all the areas that we are intervening is also contingent upon the complexities of that community. What is the capital requirement to build a distribution network to connect the entire community? How what should be the capacity of the plant that we will do? We will deploy in that community. Is it 100 kilowatt or is it 1 megawatt? Uh, so there are a number of factors that determine what uh, the electricity tariff to be charged in a particular community. And beyond that also, it's um, the fact that in these communities, the, the renewable energy framework, uh, infrastructure, there's always need for, to make a provision for capital replacement. The challenge with renewable, as we know, is that, for example, after 10 years, you may have to change the storage infrastructure. After 20 years, you may have to replace maybe the PV panels. And you have to, in all what we are doing to ensure sustainability of our project, we build this cost from the beginning. So in the tariff we charge, there is a cost for this replacement so that after 20 years, the developer that is operating the mini grid can buy new panels or storage systems so that it continues to serve the community. There's also cost of the operation and maintenance and there's some allowable uh, um, uh, profit gain that the private sector will make out of the tariff. So all these factors are factored, all these costs are factored in determining the tariff to be charged. But for sustainability, it's the most efficient and cost-effective means of providing the communities. I would like to ask, uh, I'll come from a practical point of view. You see, in most of our rural areas that previously are on the, on the line, they are connected, that are using power, but for 
reason for the possibility of uh, maintaining infrastructure and the rest and probably transformer or transmission line got damaged you discover that they are often neglected because they do not have the ability to repurchase new one or repair things themselves unlike a modern community where people put resources together and repair it themselves even those that do that is it right what is your take about all this because there are many communities that have been disconnected for many years on this what is the solution in your view? Thank you, sir. So, um, the, the, the first thing we do is to make sure that we build the, the project around a private sector, which means that he has a skin in the game, which means that if the mini grid is not working, he's losing money. So, you can see that the private sector person will make sure that he puts in place a rapid response uh, mechanism to address any fault. Because even if it is one house that is faulty, it means that that private sector person managing the mini grid is losing some economic value and it is will be in his best interest to quickly go and deploy. That is one system that we do. The second system, which is the most sustainable, is we create what we call the reuse, renewable energy user cooperative society in all these communities, whereby these cooperative societies we get as a means of even creating employment opportunities we train the youth within these communities to have the technical competence of fixing these faults so with the community that's cooperative that respond to the to addressing the fault and at the same time ensure the sustainability of the mini grid over a period of time md sir what's the current status of rural electrification in nigeria and the amounts allocated for rural electrification from the national budget. So, and, and that's, this is the wisdom of the current uh, government. Like I told you, just approved a World Bank facility of $750 million. Because the present government knows that the, the challenge of addressing electricity added is not something that uh, the government should quickly fund. Uh, not only that, the federal government also realized that there is need for a quick and huge intervention to address that. And that is why the federal government has secured this concessionary funding from the World Bank. And um, so in REA, we are implementing our projects using four different sources of income. The first is the one through development for partners with the federal government secured from the World Bank, Africa Development Bank. And this is a huge amount of money that we do huge projects to address it. One of which I told you is the DES that is targeted to provide 17.5 million Nigeria with access. The second source of fund that we have is from the electricity market. The Electricity Act has uh, provided a source of revenue for rural electrification fund, whereby all the levies or fines that the uh, Electricity Regulatory Commission charges within the market that money comes to us, and even the excess revenue percentage of the excess revenue of the regulator also comes to REA. So that fund also is used to intervene to provide uh, mini grids in different states. The third source of revenue is the one that comes from uh, grants, uh, normally the grants that we get with development partners. For example, we are working. United Nations Development uh, Program, UNDP, uh, in deploying a program on Africa Mini Grid, where we are deploying 20 mini grids that will create an access of uh, electricity of over 30 megawatts across different parts of the country. So they provide us with funding to design models, to design um, a solution that we can be replicated across the country. Then the last, the, which is the fourth source of our um, uh, income funding to address the electricity challenge is from the budgetary allocation, which comes yearly in yearly out from the National Assembly. I would really like to know why the problem is persistent. Because in those days when uh, uh, we were in the villages, we were having a lot. They were targeting time from 6 maybe to 12 midnight. We'll be having steady power supply using the rural electrification boards, but now it's not happening. What really is the target of the federal government, and what exactly is the problem that now people in the rural areas are not having it? 
it's not economically viable, for example, to extend the national grid to these uh, communities. For example, it costs $1.5 million to build one kilometer of transmission line. So imagine building 100 kilometers of transmission line to take electricity to rural areas that the consumption is not more than one megawatt. It's not, it's not the, the, the financial model is not really uh, in the best interest of the country. So it's that is why relying on distributed renewable energy is now the most strategic way to address that challenge, whereby we go to this community, we build the generation plant using the solar home system, we build the distribution network and power the entire communities. So that is why we are relying on this. Then the second, um, uh, why it's strategic to rely on the renewable as the way uh, and the future to address the electricity access is also because we have the abundance of the renewable energy. We have high level of solar irradiation in the country, especially in the far north. It's very good irradiation. So generating electricity is very easy. Uh, we have small and medium hydro um, hydro dams across the country. Uh, just recently, we uh, the RBA has into partnership with Zenido to build a 300 kilowatt uh, 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 micro dam that will provide 300 kilowatt of electricity in a particular community in Gombeste. So this is some of the things that we are doing. And we are also testing other models. We are testing using biomass to create this general uh, electricity. We are testing the wind. Uh, Mr. Managing Director, uh, Rural Electrification Board, and uh, I have some such uh, kind of uh, request or question to make. Uh, we obviously said uh, uh, we are in notice town part of the country and we have challenges of electricity, uh, power, power supply, more especially uh, the uh, problems of power supply in the country. Sometimes when there is no light, uh, when you go to our hospitals, uh, most especially in the night, uh, you will find out some, most especially these uh, health facilities in the rural areas. You will find them very dark, there is no light and what have you. Some are using generators, uh, diesel for generator, in which now diesel is very costly. Is uh, more than 1,000 naira per liter, which uh, sometimes management of the health facility find it very difficult to manage the power system of the health facilities. Uh, Mr. MD, uh, what can you do to intervene or to come to their aid? More especially, uh, the health facility sometimes they have drugs that are not uh, hot temperature friendly. They need life resources such as this kind of vaccines uh, and what have you. So, if you can come to the edge of these health facilities to provide at least solar powered uh, system to these health facilities so that they can be using it in uh, running, smooth running. So, this is also a very good question. And um, as a background, we have connected over 260 uh, uh, health institutions, both primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions. And we have seen the success, we have seen the impact. Uh, part of our broadcast is an impact of how a 50 kilowatt has changed the way um, uh, the health service is provided in a particular uh, hospital, in, um, uh, teaching hospital in Port Harcourt. Federal University Teaching Hospital in Taco, where I was there, I've seen how it has changed, addressed the, 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 the gap. Uh, particularly when we went to the incubation center, the chief nurse told us that the mortality rate has been reduced based mm -hmm. on the fact that there's a quality, reliable electricity in that hospital. So we are aware of that. And that is why I told you that part of the national electrification plan that we are working on there are three specific sector plans that we are focusing on. The 
electric, education electrification plan, the agricultural electrification plan, and the health electrification plan. And we are already in partnership with Ministry of Health. The uh, Minister of uh, Health has constituted a committee that has the primary health centers, the Ministry of uh, Health, and REA toward identifying these uh, health centers and determining the best means of electricity to be provided. Uh, so we have a particular plan, energizing health centers, that we have designed and we are going to continue to implement it hand in hand with the Ministry of um, uh, Health. So for example, what we are doing in uh, New York State, if you go to the Delhi University, um, uh, Gashua, it's not in the, um, uh, uh, in the, in the capital of Yobe. You will see a huge power plant of about 1.5 megawatt that we are about to commission. We deploy that and uh, we have tested it. We have done the 72 hour testing and it's working. Um, so what we are doing in this regard is also targeting the unserved or underserved areas so using what we, the concept of interconnected mini grids. Like I told you, under the DES project, 1.5 million Nigerians will be served with electricity using the interconnected mini grid. So all these uh, rural urban migration, most of them migrate to the peri-urban areas and that keeps draining the infrastructure of those areas. So we are also focusing on that area. We are, and that's why the concept of interconnected mini grids was uh, created, and we are going to do a lot in that areas. For example, currently we are we have worked with the distribution companies, and they provided us with six hundred sites that are within this uh, urban areas where we are going to now develop. We are, have uh, selected forty of the sites, and we are going to start providing the interconnected mini grid in this 40 site and continue to cover the entire 600 site. So we are also aware of this rural urban migration and we are specifically targeting this in the urban areas that are getting more stretch uh, in that regard. The REA continues innovative measures to harness the potentials of renewable energy to power unserved areas, stimulate economic growth, and enhance the quality of life for rural dwellers. Moving forward, Nigerians in rural areas, those unserved in urban centers and public institutions, such as universities, will soon access reliable electricity with hybrid solar plants, coming upstream and other alternatives be explored. That's Richard for Democracy. I'm Ayodeji. Mike Inde will be back same time, same station next week.